But first tonight, after spending decades as America's most open industry, the world of tech is closing up again, and it's doing so quickly. Again and again, powerful technology companies have shown their willingness to engage in censorship aggressively, and their targets appear to be mostly on the conservative side. On Google-owned YouTube, for example, videos by Trump supporters have been cut off from ad revenue, often for no clear reason at all. On Twitter, popular personalities like Milo Yiannopoulos and Martin Shkreli have been banned without explanation, while hateful rhetoric on the left routinely goes unpunished or even unnoticed. And if you're on Twitter, you know what I'm talking about. Amazon and PayPal both have started to target organizations using a blacklist crafted by the Southern Poverty Law Center. That's an illegitimate left-wing group that routinely uses its hate group label to target ordinary conservative groups. The greatest threats to an open society now are not in Washington. They're in Silicon Valley and cyberspace. Brian Claypool is a civil rights attorney. He says he supports the recent behavior of tech companies, and he joins us tonight. Brian, I, I assume you're liberal. I would imagine uh, that you're against <laughs> censorship and for free expression, a free exchange of ideas. Liberals used to stand for those things. Why no longer? Yeah, Tucker, I don't think this is about being liberal or conservative. This is about human decency. Did you see the post? We're talking specifically about Cloudfare, this company Cloudfare, that banned a, a company called Daily Stormer. Are you familiar with the post that Daily Stormer put up there oh, about the, uh, the young lady in Charlottesville? No, that was but killed? I can imagine I mean, it was it was all so I can imagine it was loathsome. It, There's all kinds of loathsome material on the internet. All of it. I'm not here to defend right. it. What I'm here to defend is the open exchange right. of views, however loathsome. And I would think as a liberal you would agree with me, but you don't. Why? No, no, I don't, because we live in a different society. I view it as miraculous that we've gone how many decades now with private corporations who are basically self-regulated. We don't have laws that should require companies like Cloudfare to, to remove uh, hate groups like Daily Stormer when they're posting things that are, that are vitriolic that could, Tucker, lead to violence. For example, there are two pending billion-dollar lawsuits against Facebook because people are now arguing that because Facebook didn't remove postings by people that killed other people in terroristic acts, that that was material support to no, those I, killings. I've, I've seen so the argument. It's a new argument, and it's an argument from the left exclusively that speech equals violence. The Supreme Court has ruled on this repeatedly. It does not equal violence. Speech is protected by the First Amendment. Liberals used to understand that. Indeed, they're responsible for those Supreme Court cases that enshrined it in law. And my question is, why are they retreating from their longstanding position that if you don't like something, you argue against it? You don't shut it down. I don't understand when the change yeah. happened. Yeah, Tucker, I believe the change happened when we've, when we've had an onslaught over the past few years of terroristic acts within the U.S. And then afterwards we find out that, for example, out here, I'm in L.A., the San Bernardino shooting. Remember that? How can we forget that? I mean, the, the shooter is posting on Facebook. He's sending messengers through Facebook. There's, there's propaganda being promoted through yeah, Facebook. there is. It's time. It's, yeah, but Tucker, here's the point. You have to try to preempt something before it happens. If you have a group like Daily Stormer that's calling a 32-year-old woman haven't, a, you haven't a thought slut. That, okay, it, I'm not, it, again, look, look, if you're, uh, you're not going to put me in no a position to utility. defend the ugliness of a lot of the things online. I'm merely saying that once you decide you're going to censor speech, a lot of really difficult questions arise, such as who gets to decide what's hate and what's legitimate argument? What are the punishments? These are questions we haven't faced right. in this country because we that, have a First Amendment. And unfortunately, the left, because it's that, now in power, uh, in control of all of our cultural institutions, no longer believes in it. And so here's my question. So it's a not, company like, like Google yeah. is more powerful than any company in the history of the world, okay? It's a trillion dollar company. Right. Aren't you a little concerned by the concentration of power in a small number of hands in that company at all? Yeah. yeah, yes, yeah. One thing we can agree on is the answer is yes, but we need a remedy. Unfortunately, the CEO of Cloudfare, Tucker, he came out and said, look, I, don't, I woke up this morning. I don't really want to do what I have to do by eliminating Daily Stormer, but unfortunately, we have no laws in this country that would give me a criteria to remove them. What he's saying is we need legislators to step up, create some laws, set a criteria for when these hate groups or potential anti-terrorist well, groups are you arguing? Are you arguing that Congress eliminated. should set limits? Look, 
I, in the case of the Daily Stormer yeah. and this guy who owns a web hosting company, I get it. You know, if you don't want it on your on your platform, you, I, I'm not going to argue against that. But there's something much larger going on here, and it's a systematic suppression of speech that liberals don't agree with. And now you're arguing that the Congress ought to be in the business of deciding what you're allowed to say and what you're not allowed to say. And my question is, are you being serious? Are you being serious that this isn't a safety issue? Are you kidding me? You don't think that we need some criteria? To you need Congress you to tell you what you're allowed media, to say Tucker. out loud? Well, oh, wait a minute, Tucker. You don't think that so? You don't think that social media has anything to do with any of these terroristic acts? San Bernardino, the Isla Vista shooting I in think, Santa Barbara. I think it has a lot Paris to do with attack. it. I think social media are awful. Right. That's so, why I don't go on them. But it's, but I think the remedy time, that you're proposing is a regulation of speech. No, it's of speech have, that you disagree it's, with. Okay, it's time for regulation. And I really hope. No, it's not. It's not. It was not time it's for regulation of speech. I thought that's what you were just arguing. You were saying that no, the Congress we, ought to I, determine what we're allowed to I'm say not, and what we're not allowed to say. And I'm asking you, are you really willing to put that into the hands of politicians? Because, you know, there's a Republican majority in the Congress. What if they say, you know, I don't know, anybody who advocates for transgender bathrooms is committing a hate crime? How would you feel about that, Brian? Well, well how, how would you feel if we have another... Let, how would you feel if we have another Charlottesville, let's say, in Austin, Texas in two weeks? I would feel weeks, terrible. And there are all these terrible. postings. Let me finish. No, but there, but there are postings or there are groups or hate groups yeah. out there that are providing the impetus or the desire for others to go out and do these acts. You don't think, Tucker, we have a social responsibility to try to remove that? That's not We've censorship. Got, look, That's I, common sense. No, it, it is censorship. And what I'm saying is that you, like most liberals, are ruled entirely by your emotions and you're not thinking this through to the next step, which is censorship. You're calling for it. And my point only is that the remedy is bad. It will kill the patient. You will not have a free society if you're not allowed to say what you think, even if it's ugly. That's been our tradition since the founding, and you're advocating for ending it. And I think you should think through the consequences of that. That's all I'm saying. I'm not defending the creepiness on the Internet. I hate okay. it, just like you do. Anyway, thank you, right. Brian. Good to see you. you